Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. When you've had low testosterone and you've had the negative symptoms that are associated with having low levels, low mood, anxiety, depersonalization, lack of energy, lack of motivation, lack of drive, oh, the list goes on. You desperately want to reverse them. One of the things that people do is they place all of their eggs in the one basket because you found the diagnosis. It's low testosterone. So if I reverse that, all of my problems will be resolved. I will be the man that I've always dreamt I wanted to be. Obviously, that's a very simplistic way of looking at it. And disappointingly incorrect. As we know, when it comes to health, you need to look at all of the things that contribute to health every single day. Now we know that melandrin levels follow a diurnal pattern. They are highest in the morning. Every day is a new opportunity to seize the day. So you need to look at reducing stress improving your sleep, looking to eat a well-balanced diet, exercise regularly, to use your hormones appropriately. So you've had low testosterone, you feel rubbish, you've now on TRT to feel optimized. Now we've said before, and I'll say it again, testosterone is a foundation hormone which allows you to achieve the reward hormones that you are desperately seeking. But those reward hormones are transitory. So you're not supposed to have consistently elevated reward hormones because otherwise you wouldn't do anything. So if we restore your foundation hormones, what next? Well, it's a conscious decision to do the right things. Ordinarily, you've probably done the wrong things in the past, which has probably got you to the place where you are right now. But we are all walking wounded. There is no judgment here at the Men's Health Clinic. Past indiscretions are noted and you learn from them and move forwards. Nobody that's very successful has not faced hardships. In fact, it's likely that the most successful men have faced hardships, battled them, and become a better person as a result of them. Much like guys who have done naughty things, we have lots of good stories. No regrets. Life shouldn't be about regrets. But I suppose we'd all look back and think, hmm, Perhaps I shouldn't have taken two. <laughs> uh, perhaps I should have been a little bit more considered. But it is what it is. You have to take that necessary next step forwards on your journey. Ah, oh, the mistakes I've made. <laughs> oh, it's given me empathy. And it's given me insight to help you guys hopefully achieve balance. Having lived a life of excess, a life where hedonism was the ultimate goal, party on Garth. Um, no, we need to understand this concept of balance and the need for contrast in order to establish harmony. With extreme highs come extreme lows and you're gonna pay the piper. Um, so yeah, when you've had low testosterone, the automatic assumption is I'm gonna go on testosterone and I'm gonna be automatically Superman. Not realizing it is an important part of the puzzle, but it is the foundation from whence to build upon to address the things that you probably haven't been addressing adequately before. 
because you've lacked drive, you've lacked determination, or you've actually put the effort in and got disheartened because you haven't seen the results. When we put the hard work in, we obviously want to see the results. So it's clearly disappointing beating your head against a brick wall and not being able to knock that wall down and move forwards. And then you spiral and spiral down to the point that you just don't care and don't bother. The decline in testosterone tends to be insidious. Now, whilst you might have obvious causation, banging in gear, doing a bit of, and uh, all sorts of little things, causation is difficult to identify because we don't have pre and post levels. And so you think the insidious decline is actually just you. Much like if you haven't done anything wrong, in theory, you haven't done anything wrong. Haven't done naughty things. You haven't burnt the candle at both ends. Well, you haven't actually listened to your biology. And as we said before, we don't really understand our biology. But we do now, don't we, guys? We need to work at it every single day. We need to work at our lifestyle, our diet, and train every single day. There is no day off. Get on it like a car bonnet. So we've had low testosterone. We now want high testosterone. No, we don't want high testosterone. We want a testosterone that's suitable to your genetics, your physiology, and your requirements. Understanding that the anabolic hormones must match, counterbalance the catabolic hormones. We want you to be cool, calm and collected and have a considered response to the situation. Because what are men like with high testosterone? Listen, testosterone is necessary for drive and determination. But too much testosterone turns you into a little bit of a narcissist, doesn't it? Too much drive and determination comes at the expense of empathy and insight and understanding. You start saying opinions as facts and you cannot be defeated, especially on the internet, because there's no recourse for your actions. There are no consequences. We're not gonna scrap disappointingly um, so you can huff and you can puff and you can be delusional you can promote dogma you can tell people what they want to hear not what they need to hear you can gain the necessary validation of your existence by presenting uneducated ill-informed information because it gets you a like a pat on the back but sometimes truths are hard to hear and when you've got high testosterone you're not ready to accept those truths say you have a pair of bangers oh god love you god love you so from a psychological perspective, men with high testosterone can have symptoms and signs of narcissistic personality disorder. Disappointingly, that's incurable. It's manageable, but not with the internet, clearly. <laughs> from a physiological perspective, obviously one of the major concerns with high testosterone is high hematocrit. An increase in red blood cell count compared to the concentration of plasma volume. Obviously thick blood in a volume, the heart has to pump harder, blood pressure, clot strokes. It's not rocket science, is it? Excess DHT. Longitudinal studies suggest that there's a risk of cardiac problems, cardiovascular disease. But we love DHT. We rub the cream on our nuts 
and it makes us invincible. If something seems too good to be true, it's too good to be true. It's all about balance, baby. Um, but yeah, we like DHT, don't we? Until it bites us on the butt. We like estrogen. It's good for mood, libido, cognitive function, but too much causes anxiety. Start crying at rom-coms. <laughs> It's necessary for the endothelial lining of the blood vessels. So it's good for your cardiovascular health. But too much causes blood pressure problems. Oh, if you wanted a pair of bangers, you'd have high estrogen and block testosterone. Because estrogen is excitatory, testosterone is inhibitory to breast tissue development. It's obviously a bit more complicated than that, including prolactin, IGF-1, etc. But that's the premise. So it's super important to understand the concept of balance and understand that from a lo longevity perspective, you must balance anabolic and catabolic, sympathetic, parasympathetic, understand the need for contrast, but extremes of high and low do not help facilitate homeostasis, which is what you should be trying to aspire to achieve. Your conscious being is... Good luck, guys. It's all about the journey.